So here's what I suggest we try in this one. We have a car and let's tinker with its engine. Specifically with the cylinder head we got right here on the hood. We saw this really amusing comment recently, where somebody was like, so we got a head and an engine that works. And he was like, try taking some old-timey coins and using them to make valves. We actually really like the idea. So let's try it out. We're gonna take these here old coins. This one was actually made to commemorate a hundred years since the birth of our former chieftain. So these were the largest coins we could find, right? And here's the idea. We got the cylinder head looking all nice. All of the valves are accounted for. Okay, so check this out. The exhaust valve is the same exact diameter, but now let's have a look at the intake valve. Anyway, the point is that the coin is 31 mil in diameter, while for the intake valve it's 37. So the coin just drops right in there. Which means we won't be able to use these coins to make the intake valves. Hey, no worries. We should at least try making the exhaust valves. Now, that viewer of ours suggested we weld or solder on a nail to this, but the idea with the nail is a bit questionable. The reason being, they're made of metal that's too soft for that sort of load. We're going to be using some rebar instead. We're going to be putting this onto a lathe, machining the stems and getting them just the way we need them. There was something else I wanted to add. Now, these coins are actually pretty durable. We couldn't bend them no matter what we did. These are super hard. But how do we fuse the coin with rebar? Well, that's something we've yet to figure out. Alright, let's make us some valves, let's do this. We make valves out of old Soviet coins. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Check it out, we've made the valves out of them anniversary coins. We've soldered them on using brass. Now we were considering tapping thread and using nuts, but at the end of the day, you just wouldn't have looked right. Using these for exhaust valves might not have been the right decision either. When the engine is under load, the temperature inside the exhaust manifold it can get up there. Maybe not in a lot of them, but on a race car you might be seeing a thousand centigrade, perhaps even 1200. And so the valves are also getting quite warm, obviously. Anyway, so we opted for soldering, which should make for more durability compared to a threaded connection. Okay, well, now it's a matter of throwing all of this together and proceeding to test start the engine. Let's do this. Okay, we've got everything assembled, it's all looking good. I was about to say let's do this, but he's already turning it. Please continue. Okay. 
For real? Something's not right. Okay, it runs. Those coins are really something. Let off the gas. Oh, you did. Tremendous. It is a bit unstable. Perhaps that's down to it being cold. Well, let's allow it to warm up for a bit and see where this goes. I'm quite curious. Ten minutes later. Well, what can I tell you guys? The engine is at operating temp. The car is running just fine. The valves aren't giving us any trouble, that's nice. Which is why I suggest we go for a drive. The engine will be under more stress on the go. The temperature is going to increase. And that'll be a pretty good test. Let's do this. And we're off. There we go. That's second gear. 40 kilometers an hour, good. 60. Come on now. And the rev count is fairly decent. At 3,000. Three and a half thousand. And got up to four even. Temperature is above normal. And the radiator is spitting liquid. The temperature is climbing fast. It's gotten pretty hot. Is it missing the cooling fan? Yeah, the fan is missing. We are currently in the process of cooling the engine off. The heater is now up and running. I can feel the warm air. And it's not allowing the engine to overheat. In the meantime, we're pouring cold water straight onto the radiator for some additional cooling. Which is fairly common practice. Okay, the temperature is normal, we're looking good. And hopefully the heater can do its job. And that the engine is not going to overheat. Wow, so much steam. But that's because we were pouring water onto the radiator. Okay, it's popping and banging now. Who's next? It runs quite confidently. I'm not noticing any weirdness. Oh, but now I do hear the valves. They're chattering, Sergei. Though the engine seems to be running just fine. Six hours later. Look at that, they work. They don't even care. They're more than able to cope with the temps, the load. And what's really cool is that we thought if the temperature were to get really high, the brass would have gotten soft, resulting in the coins falling off. But so far, no such thing has happened, which I'm personally very happy about. Talk about quality.
I don't even know what to do. I don't get it. We tried loading it up, and we've even overheated it. We're revving its balls off, but the valves work. Like, no adverse effects at all. Our fear of them unsticking was unfounded, and they haven't burned to a crisp yet. Everything just works. You know what I think we need to do? We need to take the car outside, load the engine up by doing a burnout, and just wait. Doesn't seem like we have any other options. Well, what are you gonna do about it? We were roasting the tires for about half an hour. That'll have to do, Sergey. Okay, here's the situation, fellows. We were doing a burnout right here. And it might have been, like, the longest one ever. I've honestly never seen one that would have lasted quite as long. Granted, we were spraying the radiator to keep the engine from overheating, since it was under a bit of load. And we sprayed the pavement underneath the tires. Just in case, better safe than sorry. Again, the radiator we sprayed to prevent overheating. What's interesting is that when... When we came in after doing that super long burnout, I feel as if engine operation is smoother than before. I honestly have no clue as to... I mean, before it was misfiring, but then it ceased to for whatever reason. It's still alive after that extended test. It's not even just the principle of how to make a valve. This is really a testament to the quality of those old coins. And the quality of our brass soldering. Amazingly enough, everything held up. Because we were expecting the engine to warm up, and for the valves to overheat in just a couple of minutes. The brass gets soft and the coins fall off. But as a matter of fact, everything held up just fine. This was pretty amazing. This is a 46-year-old car, and the coins are like 52. Yeah, they don't make things like they used to. Whoever says Ladas are bad cars is just wrong. You'd use those coins to buy one, and I'd say they're very much worthy of each other. And that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later. Now we need to find some old Russian Empire Golden Tens. <laughs> They're tiny. <laughs>